Hi everybody, Jeremy here from Video Editor Studio and today I'm going to run you through a couple of functionality in the timeline of DaVinci Resolve 17 so you can be more efficient next time you're editing. Let's check it out. Alright, so we're in DaVinci Resolve 17 right now, we are on the edit page and I'm going to show you how to use certain of the functionality here in the timeline. So you have two timeline here, uh, in blue you have the video timeline and in green you have the audio timeline. Let's start up with the functionality on the audio timeline. Here you have an M, it's mute track. If you click on it and it's red, that means that basically this track is mute. So right now my first track is my music and all the rest is my sound effect. So if I play my video, as you can see now, I only have the sound effects and I don't have the music anymore. But if I would like to do the reverse, I could just unmute it and instead go with solo. What it's gonna do here is gonna do the opposite. Basically everything gonna be mute and only the track that is solo, we're gonna be able to hear it. So here, if I play the same, we only have the music and we don't have the SFX. You have something that is quite similar with the video track, with here, disable video track. If you toggle that right here, I'm gonna take an example with that timeline. Here on the first timeline, I have basically my rush, uh, all my clip, and here I have uh, some adjustment, here's some text, for example. If I click on disable video track, so all the video on that track, as you can see, have been gray out uh, and the text has disappeared. So it can be very useful uh, if you want to, you know, remove a uh, certain of the clip, see how it looks without it uh, or if it looks better with it. So let's just reactivate that. Now we have two last function. We have lock and we have auto track selector. As you can see, it's available for both the video and both the audio. So here, if we lock the track, basically we cannot do anything. We cannot move the track. We cannot make just adjustment here uh, in the inspector. We cannot do anything. It's locked, it's done. It can be very useful if basically you have your main timeline right here uh, for video, for example, you have your music and your video. Everything is done. You don't want to modify anything on those two main timeline. And you just want to add a couple of effect like uh, here some text or anything like some sound effects uh, and you don't want to just overwrite uh, some sound or overwrite some video clip you can just lock those two timeline uh, and it's a great way to make sure that nothing gets modified because there is nothing worse than just modify something without you noticing it continue to work on a project and then uh, realize that there is something wrong with your project so that's a great way to use it um, now you have one last possibility is auto track selector it does something that is quite similar but not as strict uh, as mentioned if you use the lock you cannot modify anything um, which can be like a plus or a minus depending on what you try to achieve but if you unselect by default everything is um, selected with auto track selector so everything uh, use auto track selector but if you choose to click it and basically have it off. What it does basically is that now this track uh, gonna stay fixed and not gonna be modified if I make any modification on the video or on another timeline. Uh, that's not gonna affect this track. You can still modify, let's say here, the audio. If I want to change the audio or any parameter into inspector, you can still do that. But then if I do a ripple delete, it's not gonna affect the position of um, the clip in this track. So just to give you an example, here it was activated. If I try to do a ripple delete, as you can see, I'm gonna ripple delete this clip right here. And then my audio is moving along with it because everything is linked together. That's why there is auto track selector. But now if I try to do a ripple delete with auto tracker selector off, so that means that that's not gonna move at all. If I do a ripple delete right now, you can see that everything is sliding, the SFX, uh, the other uh, tracks, everything is sliding to adjust to uh, this ripple delete, except this track. So it can be a very nice way, uh, you know, to keep your music um, as it is without having uh, any problem uh, of the music sliding when you do a ripple delete, for example. That's pretty much everything that you need to know about those timeline functionalities. I hope this video was helpful. Please let me know in the comment what kind of video you would like to see in the future. Don't forget to like, and subscribe and see you in the next one. Bye. Improve your video and speed up your workflow by using easy to use drag and drop templates made specifically for DaVinci Resolve. Check it out on our website, videoeditorstudio.com.